Beautiful, the National Park of Dartmoor in Devon. Legendary throughout the world where millions of visitors return each year to soak up its magic and grace its hills and valleys. A generation comes and goes, but Dartmoor remains unchanged, a jewel in paradise despite its bleakness and at times unconquerable tours due to the treacherous winters with blankets of snow and howling sub-zero winds. Whilst the beauty of summer is hard to describe, it is as if the moor had always been there, beckoning and inviting, a bleak silence that brings life into perspective. But our story is a sad one, for no longer does the smell of the smoke and the distant bark of prairie tanks echo through the tors and valleys of the moor. The old GWR branch, Yelverton to Princetown, is no more, now just a distant memory of the past. 133 years of steam transportation closed as a result of balance sheet deficits by British Rail Western Region in 1956. Though gone, the line had a rich history, from stories of convicts escorted to the prison at Princetown to the emergency services sent out to rescue trains stranded in the snowbound tours of winter's past. Running from Yelverton to Princetown, the train had to circumnavigate ten and a half miles, negotiating some of the most treacherous climbs in England with a ruling gradient of one in forty. Particularly was this the case in the winter months, yet according to engineers, and despite frozen rails in the heart of winter, it was rare to encounter slipping of any kind. Leaving Yelverton, the line headed out towards the little village of Dowsland. From there it twisted on towards the Great Lake of Burrator, where the station of Burrator and Sheepstore Halt was perched high on a bank overlooking the reservoir. Onwards then, and a climb to the summit and lonely station of Ingratore Halt, perched at the top of the incline. Across Walkhampton Common in an easterly direction to Kingtore Halt. And finally, into Princetown itself, the terminus. From Plymouth's main station, the train would have headed out towards Tavistock Junction and into Marsh Mills, following the track then through Plimbridge Platform, on to Bickley, then Shaw Pryor, Clearbrook Halt, and finally into Yelverton, the junction station for the Princetown line. The layout of Yelverton Station, although small, was relatively complicated as country stations go. The track ran straight through, running south in the down direction and on into the tunnel beyond. Halfway up the platform stood the building housing, the ticket office and waiting rooms. A 35 lever signal box controlled the rail traffic. In this view of the station, the turntable can be seen with the inspection pit and road but the turntable was not used to turn engines. Its function was reserved for snowplough activity during the treacherous winter weather. The Princetown branch platform was reached from points leading off the uploop just north of the island platform. The engine usually returned from Princetown bunker first and the method of changing ends at Yelverton was by a runaround employing gravity procedure. A train headed by engine 4568 is seen here arriving from Dowsland. The engine is decoupled from the carriages and tucked away in the spur. The road now clear, the signal off and the guard allows the coaches to run back into the platform under their own steam as it were. And with the spur road clear, the engine runs back to pick up the coaches for the outward journey. A 44-class tank and two coaches forming the usual branch train stand in their platform waiting for the off. And as the train moves slowly out of the station, it faced a steep climb on a rising gradient of 1 in 40. 
The scenery suddenly opened up at this point to green fields bordered by the River Meavy and backed by the Alderwood Plantation as the journey passed through the scattered environments of Yelverton. In a northeasterly direction, the train then headed towards the Grattan Cross area, negotiating two iron bridges, the first over the Yelverton to Cornwood Road and the second over the Yelverton to Meavy thoroughfare. Away to the southeast and just over a mile distant lay the village of Meavy with its royal oak in which King Charles I was said to have hidden away from his rounded adversaries during the turbulent days of the Civil War. After a half a mile, the embankment gave way to a deepening cutting running below the eastern suburbs of Yelverton. At a point where Sethella Road ran parallel to the line, the now disused Plymouth and Devonport Leet crossed the line by means of two large iron aqueducts standing on granite legs. In addition, a right of way into the fields on the eastern side of the line was provided for by three arch accommodation bridge. All bridges and viaducts have now been demolished and the track bed completely filled in. Leaving the suburbs of Yelverton, the journey then ran parallel with the main Yelverton to Princetown Road as the train approached Dowsland Station. This was a picturesque country station with a curved platform on the downside constructed of stone filling faced with brick. The signal box at the eastern end of the platform was uniquely toy-like in appearance, with its windows often decorated with geraniums. It had a 14-lever frame, with only one spare lever and bore the unusual nameplate in cast iron Dowsland Barn signal box. Though a small country station, Dowsland had its own goods shed with a small platform leading to a loading bay by the road. There was a coal store parallel to the facing side of the passing loop. As the line progressed eastward, its curvature increased as it crossed over the level crossing passing the brick-built cement rendered ground frame controlling the crossing gates. North of the gate stood Station Cottage, which still survives to this day, but known as Crossings Cottage. Here loco number 4410 waits with the 11.19am from Yelverton and an up-train from Princetown negotiates the level crossing in May of 1953. Once the level crossing was negotiated, the train entered a small shallow cutting running southwards parallel with the Walkhampton Meavy Road through the village of Dowsland. At the two mile post, a second level crossing was encountered. Prouse's crossing at a small side road to give access to the lower slopes of Yenadon Down. It was once the entrance to the old Yenadon iron mine, but now serves private housing. After Prouse's crossing, the line took up a more southeasterly course as it emerged into the open gorse strewn slopes of Yenadon Down. At this stage of the journey, passengers could look down from their train at the valley of the Meavy, with commanding views of Bowden's plantation and Flatwood on the other side of the river and Burritor Wood on the other. At two miles and 72 chains, it made its final run into Burrator and Sheep's Tor Halt, high above the Great Lake of Burrator. This heavy timber platform was supported on trestle legs with cross members. Concrete posts carrying a steel rail and several steel wires formed the back, whilst a totally out of portion wooden name board with cast iron lettering announced its name. At the south end of the platform stood a wooden waiting room. A kissing gate stood either end of the track. The one on the top side led to the footpath across Yenadon Down and the lower via rough-hewn steps down the dam. Further away to the west lies the moorland village of Sheepstor with its ancient granite church.